Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tuvas, and I'm here today to go over the basics of helicopter physics in Besiege. I will explain the basic principles to keep in mind when creating a stable, easy to control helicopter. When creating a helicopter, one of the most common problems people run into is something known as torque effect. If you don't know what torque effect is, here's a visual example. When the rotors used for lift are spinning, in this case clockwise, the body attached to the bottom of the rotors want to spin the opposite direction, or in this case counterclockwise. This is a manifestation of Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, or in this case, there is a torque effect. In the real world, most helicopters today use a tail rotor to counter the torque effect by providing just enough thrust in the opposite direction to which the body would spin. In Besiege, this is rather difficult to do as you have to take into account a number of balancing forces, including both center of mass and center of thrust, the latter of which we don't have a visual representation of. As you can see, while the body is no longer spinning thanks to the rear rotor, the new source of thrust is now offsetting the overall balance and thus causing the helicopter to tilt. Needless to say, helicopters can be very complicated pieces of machinery. The simplest way to negate the torque effect in Besiege is to create a coaxial rotor system, that is, two main rotors spinning in opposite directions at the same speeds. In this helicopter, since both rotors are of the same size and are spinning at the same speeds, only in opposite directions, they will in turn cancel out each other's torque effect, eliminating the need for a tail rotor. You see this coaxial rotor system most often in little remote control helicopters, um, so you know, the ones that are living room sized. I mean, not the size of living rooms, what I mean is they are small enough that you can play with them in a living room. Next we will talk about ways to generate thrust, or how we ascend and descend. The most common method I see nowadays in Besiege is people like to use power to ascend, or lack thereof, to descend. In this case, we're using motor wheels. As you can tell, by pressing the up arrow, we increase the speed of the rotors and therefore generate more lift, causing the helicopter to ascend. Similarly, if we want to descend, we press the down arrow. This method works, however, if you want to take your hands off the keyboard and have the helicopter stay in the air, this method probably won't do. This is where having a variable pitch rotor comes in handy. This is a helicopter that utilizes variable pitch to ascend and descend. If I press the right arrow key, the wing panels pitch up so that they generate lift as they spin. If I want to descend, I simply press the left arrow key until I get the desired effect. The best part about this design, however, is that once I find that perfect hover point, I can actually walk away from the keyboard and still have my helicopter remain in the air. Variable pitch is my preferred method for helicopters, however, due to the wing panels mass, or weight, the faster I spin them, the more likely they'll be to rip themselves apart. This can be avoided by using aerodynamic propellers since they weigh far less, however they will reduce any sort of gyroscopic stability due to decrease in spinning mass. Which brings us to our next topic, gyroscopic stabilization. According to Wikipedia, a gyroscope is a spinning wheel or disc in which the axis of rotation is free to assume any orientation. When rotating, the orientation of this axis is unaffected by the tilting or rotation of the mounting, according to the conservation of angular momentum. Or, um, to put simply, any really really fast horizontally spinning object wants to stay horizontal, even if you tilt it. We can see the same idea here. If we pitch the helicopter forward and back, you can see that the, rotor, that the rotors want to stay horizontal. However, if we tilt the rotors past the point they're allowed to move freely, we achieve forward and backward momentum. Now if we stop applying that force, the helicopter will stop tilting and eventually want to return back to its original horizontal position, effectively automatically stabilizing itself. This is gyroscopic stabilization. In order to achieve true gyroscopic stability, the spinning object has to have enough speed and mass. Just like before, if we replace the wing panel with aerodynamic propellers, we can use this helicopter with invincibility turned off. However, these propellers don't have enough mass to maintain a horizontal position. This is why the helicopter never quite achieves perfect stability. Finally, there is one more very important factor to have a perfectly stable helicopter, its center of mass. 
Imagine yourself trying to lift a pencil using a string that's been tied to it. The only way for the pencil to remain horizontal is if the string was tied perfectly at the center of the pencil. If this is not the case, you'll find that the pencil will tilt in whatever direction most of the weight or mass is at. Similarly, if the rotors or the string of a helicopter or a pencil is not perfectly on top of the center of mass, the helicopter will want to tilt. For true stability, you must make sure the rotors are directly over the center of mass. This is where ballast blocks come in handy as you can change their mass to balance the helicopter accordingly. Notice how my center of mass is now right in line with my main rotor system. So now, it should be perfectly stable when it gets in the air. Ever since the release of version 0.1, I've been playing a lot with other people's helicopters, but I found myself frustrated due to constantly fighting with the controls. You know, just to keep the helicopter level, navigate through a zone without tipping over and crashing, or let alone just simply hover in one spot. Uh, what I hope my viewers take away from this video is the importance of understanding the basic physics behind helicopters and how they work, and how to apply this knowledge so you too can make a truly amazing flying machine in the game Besiege. Now, this isn't to say that the examples I'm showing here are bad. They are, they're actually quite cool, especially the tiny one. I just hope that this video will help anyone who wants to make a working helicopter understand why theirs isn't working. I mean, if it wasn't for the physics-based gameplay besiege, I probably would have never bothered doing some reading on how real helico helicopters work with regards to things like gyroscopic precession, the torque effect, or even variable pitch rotor systems, which by itself is so intuitive, yet the first thing I tried doing in this game when I made my first helicopter was just simply spin the motor faster for more lift. So before ending off this video, I wanted to make sure I give proper credit to the creators of the machines that I showcased at the end of this video. So without further ado, I would like to say thank you to Hayfings for the Phantom, Phantom 329 for the UFO Bomber, Mutex for the Gyrocopter, and finally the Kerbal Kraken for the Heli Number 3. Now of course their steam names may change as time passes because that's up to them, but uh, I will leave the links to their creations in the description or you could click on the links through the video. And uh, if you like them, go ahead and just rate them as you see fit. So anyways guys, uh, that is about it. And I'll see you next time.